Hello, everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R, Part 4, Variables. Now, in the last lesson, we learned about the atomic data types available in R, and in the lesson before that, we learned about how to do basic arithmetic operations. But when you're working with R for data analysis and data science, you're generally going to be working with data that's already stored in R, and you're not going to be typing in too many raw values yourself and how data is generally stored in R and any other programming language for that matter is in the form of a variable. So a variable is simply something that you give a name that stores some value. And to assign variables in R you use the less than hyphen operator. It basically makes a little leftward pointing arrow. So in the code here you can see we have x, and then we're assigning it the value 10. So when we run that, it will store the value 10 in the variable named x. Below that, we're assigning y, this character, r is fun. And for z, we are assigning the value of the result of this calculation, or it's actually a logical operation. So we're calculating the square root of 144, and then we're seeing, is that equal to 12? It is equal to 12, so that should store the logical value true. So we'll run all of these and see what we get. We can see that x has been assigned the value 10, y is stored r is fun, and z did get the value of true. Now when you're assigning variables, it's generally good practice to leave a space before and after the assignment operator, just so things are easier to read. You can see up here, we're assigning p the value of 8, but there's no spaces at kind of looks messy and it's a little bit harder to tell what you're trying to do. So it's good to leave a space before and after and just makes things easier to read. So we'll run that we assign the value of 8 to P, but then we overwrote that value by assigning a different value to P. So now P is storing the value 10 instead of 8. That's how if you assign something a value again after an original assignment, it overwrites the value stored in that variable. Now, once you have values stored in variables, you can use the variable names as if they're the values to do operations, such as the mathematic operations we learned about in lesson two. So you can see here in this code cell, we have x plus p. Now, normally you can't add just x and p because they don't mean anything until you've assigned them a value. But we know earlier we assigned x the value 10, and we just assign p the value of 10 as well. So now that these actually have values associated with them as variables, we can run this, and r will take the assigned values and use them in the mathematical operation. So this result should be 10 plus 10, which will be 20. Now, in r, you can actually use the equal sign for assignment um, if you want to. That actually does work, but it's standard r practice to use the less than hyphen construction instead. And one reason for that is that when you're using functions and you have certain named arguments, you use the equals sign to show what the value of the argument is going to be. So if we go back to a function we learned last time, we learned how to round numbers using the round function. And there was this additional argument digits and when you use the additional argument, you use the equal sign to show what the value you want to put in for the named argument is. So in this case, you do not want to assign anything to a variable named digits. You actually just want to say this argument digits we want to set to two. So in this case, we want to use the equal sign. And by using the arrow construction for variable assignment, we don't confuse assignment with th this passing in of arguments for functions. And you can see that after running this, if we try to check the variable digits, it doesn't exist because we never actually assigned the variable anything. This is just an argument for the function. It doesn't count as assignment. Now, if you were to actually do an assignment in side of the function call, it will run this round as normal, but it at the same time assigns a variable digits the value two. 
So if we run this, digits will actually exist now and have the value 2. And that is something that you can do, and it's a quirk, but it's something you almost never would actually want to do. So that's why you reserve the equal sign for passing in arguments, and you reserve this assignment operator just for assigning variables. Now there is one other way you can assign variables in R. There's a built-in function called assign, and with that function you can do what amounts to the same thing as the assignment operator. So with this assign function, the first argument you pass in is the name of the variable you're going to make, and then the second argument is the value. So here we're starting kernel What's going on. For some reason the kernel is bro breaking and restarting. That is very bad. I am in the middle of a video. Why is it doing that? All right, guys. There we go. Got it back. Doing these things live in one take can have some quirks, but so be it. So here we're assigning dogs the value 2 and cats the value 3. So let's run that and see what the result is. You can see that 2 was stored in dogs and 3 was stored in cats. So this is just an alternate construction. I wouldn't generally recommend using this unless you have to for some reason. You generally won't need to use assign, but if you, for instance, are doing something with for loops and you're making functions that spit out a bunch of character values and you want to assign those character values, create variables of those names on the fly, sometimes you might need to use assign to do that, but that's kind of a more complicated corner case that we're probably not going to be running into at all in this guide, but it's good to know that it exists if you have to do that. So that's about it for how variables work, but now we are well positioned to go into the different, more advanced data types in R because we have the ability to store them. So in the next lesson, we will start learning about those data types with part five, vectors. See you then.